Hi! So today's Friday and I thought it would be great to read this book here. Zen Ghost. It's a little kid's book. We picked it up in Nottingham. But before I do, I like to have something to drink. And this is called Teachers. I've always wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> now today is a nice day. We went on a bike trip. Okay. Do you know this New Orleans chef? That's how it reminds me. Okay, so let me get this cleared up. Good. Let me smell it. Mm, it's a little bit sweet. Maybe they put something inside there. Mm -mm. It's from Glasgow, Scotland. Mm. It's like mouthwash. <laughs> okay, Zen Ghost by John J. Muth. Two ninety-nine pounds. Yeah, that's always nice. So the rabbit and the panda. For John Dido Lori. Oh, nice artwork. That's the best thing about this. Can you see that? The little boy there with a the panda. It says, Michael, there's a ghost outside, said Carl. A what? said Michael. Here. It's good. A big, scary looking ghost, said Carl. Is it still water? asked Michael. It doesn't have Stillwater's face, said Carl. Oh, wait. Yes, he does. Come in, Stillwater. Hi, Stillwater, said Addie. Happy almost Halloween. We are working on our costumes. I'm going to be a moon princess. What are you going to be? And then, ooh, like such a creepy picture, right? So, it's good. I'm a ghost, said Stillwater. What are you going to be? He asked Carl and Michael. I'm going to be a monster, said Carl. What a powerful heat ray and atomic breath. I will cause awesome destruction. I haven't decided what I'm going to be, said Michael. Either an owl or a pirate. I really like owls and I really like pirates. Oh, yeah. So, very disciplined. It's nice. Good. Perhaps you will be an owl pirate, said Stillwater. He can't be an owl pirate, said Carl. There's no such thing as an owl pirate. He has to be one thing. So here's the little girl, so sweet. Says, he can be whatever he wants, said Addie. Look, Stillwater, do you like my costume? Let's uh, first show this art. Right here. Okay. Yes, said Stillwater. It reminds me of something. This is a very special Halloween. There is going to be a full moon, and I know someone who will tell you a ghost story. Yay, said Addie. I love ghost stories, said Michael. It's not too scary, is it? asked Carl. After trick-or-treating, me, uh, meet me by the big stone wool, and I will take you to the storyteller, said Stillwater. Oh, here. This is good for little kids. So. There's nothing of <laughs> silliness. Okay. It says, when the children were done trick-or-treating, they waited by the stone wall. I'll trade you three mints for one snookers, said Addie. No, said Carl. I'm not giving up my snookers. But you don't even like them, said Addie. Come on. I only like tiny mints if they are crunch pepper, peppermint kind, said Carl. Besides, I am saving my snookers. I have one flavored like bam boo, said Stillwater. Wow, you scared me, said Carl. How long have you been there? 
full of me, said Stillwater. Ooh, spooky, right? Here. So, just before I read further, I will have a sip of that. Mm. Put it on. Woo! That stuff. Huh. I don't think I like that so much. I've never gone this way before, said Michael. Me neither, said Carl. I think I have, said Addie. So, Clearwater leads the way. Strange that he would be called Clearwater. Oh, so here. He takes the children to a house. You already know that's trouble taking kids to the house, huh? <laughs> What's going to happen? In a few moments, they arrived at Stillwater's house. So a panda has a house, right? Anthropomorphism. It is very misty, said Addie. Come in, said Stillwater. They all sat facing the front of the room. Then a panda, who looked exactly like Stillwater, came in and sat down. Is that Stillwater? whispered Carl. Yes, mm, no. I don't know. Shh, whispered Michael. Come on. Good. Oh, this is nice. So it looks like he's going to teach the children calligraphy. Yeah, I just like this. The panda held up a brush and said, I am going to draw you a story. Hmm. Once, long, long ago, there was a young girl named Senyo. Her parents loved her very much and they took very good care of her. She had a best friend named Ohu, whom she had known for as long as she could remember. They were together so much that Senyu's father would laugh and say, You two are so well matched, you will probably end up marrying each other. As they grew up, they believed this would happen, and they fell in love. Of course they did. Oh, what a beautiful dress. But when Senyo reached marrying age, her father suddenly became ill and couldn't work. He came to her one evening and told her that she must wed a nice man named Henryo. Henryo was a prosperous and oh, Henryo was prosperous and could take care of the family. Hmm. So it's very sad. Now Senyo was very sad. She had always hoped that she would marry her best friend, Ohu. And here. And here. Good. When Ohu heard about this, he decided to leave that very night. He couldn't stand to be in the same village where his beloved Senyo would be married to someone else. At midnight, with a full moon, he secretly went to the river's edge packed his boat and left. He didn't tell anyone, not even Senyo. As he traveled up the river, he saw a vague figure running along the bank. His heart leapt when he saw that it was Senyo, and he hurried to her side. They hugged each other tightly and decided to go off together. Senyo and Ohu journeyed to a faraway village where they married and had two children. They were very happy. Then one day Senyo came to Ohu in tears. She longed to be with her parents and to see her home again. Ohu felt the same way. They decided to return together and face the consequences. Now I think I'll take another sip of that. It's good stuff. Mm. Good. When they arrived at the dock, Oku said, Let me go first to see your father. I will apologize and find out how things are before you come. Senyu's father was very happy to see him. Oku told him they were sorry for what they had done and that he and Senyo were now a family with two children. Senyo's father was astonished. What are you talking about? he asked. 
From the time you left the village, Senyo has been very sick in bed. <gasps> she is unable to speak. Now Oku was surprised. But I promise you, Senyo is well, and you are a grandfather. I will bring her to you. As Oku went to the dock, Senyo's father rushed to his daughter's bedside and told her what Oku had said. She and sh as she had heard the story, she was filled with joy. Without saying a word, she rose from her bed and went quickly down the stairs. So this very beautiful story. <gasps> yeah. Have a look. Isn't that special? At that very moment, the senyo who had come ashore arrived. Let me turn up my background. Arrived at the house with Oku. The two senyos, upon seeing each other, merged and became one. The storyteller paused. Then he asked, "Which senyo is the true one? Are they one or are they two?" Questions, yes. Now the children must answer the questions. Are they one or are they two? Addie, Michael and Carl looked at one another. Then they turned and looked beside them. Only a mask was sitting on the cushion. Ah, oh, I think I know. When they looked at Stillwater sitting in the front of the room, he was reaching into a bag of Halloween candy. I got a bunch of whistles and tiny mints. Does anyone want to have a bamboo flavored snookers? So, modern mates, the ancient, I would say. Ah, let's look. Here are some interesting pictures. Mm, it has nothing. I've been saving this one for you, said Carl. Thank you, said Stillwater. Thank you, said Carl. That was a very good story. But I think the story's not over. Hmm. Sweet. That must be England. Doesn't look like Japan. And that's the end of it. So it was quite nice. Wait a minute. It's about duality here. I wanted to offer this story to children because at a very young age we discover questions about duality. There is the me I am with my parents, the me I am with my friends, and there is another me with a different group of friends. I am my mother's son when I am with her, but am I not also my mother's son when I am with my friends? Do I act differently? What if they want me to do something my mother's son would not do? Am I being dishonest with someone? With myself? When our hearts are taken in two different directions, where are we? This particular koan happens to be the very old Chinese story. But it is a story that happens every day in our lives. Koans don't have right or wrong answers as much as they have responses that show understanding. In Zen Buddhism, the teacher who gives you a koan is looking to see if you truly have dis digested the question. And if you have, the answer becomes your own. And here it stands, the back of it. So it's just like a little book to get people to think. I just like that. Um, probably I will leave it here in Germany when I go to America. Yeah. So that's the end of my story. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. And wherever you are in this world, may the day be the greatest day for you. And I hope you are well and happy and taking care of yourselves. Alright. Bye bye.